you know, you know, dude. Oh my goodness, bruh. <sighs> this manga chapter, man. They keep. I keep saying this is the best manga chapter to date, and somehow they always make this next the next newest manga chapter be even better because of the shots and surprises, bro. Oh my god. Manga chapter 292 of My Hero Academia is a great chapter. Oh my goodness. That ending was phenomenal. Now, I'll talk about Lemillion's return and my theories and my speculations on that at the end of the video when I'm overgrowing everything we saw and stuff. But anyways, anyways, anyways. Hey guys, this is Camp15. I'm back at it with another video for you guys. And this is another My Hero Academia manga chapter review. And man, I believe we were on a two week break, so we waited for a while and man, was it worth the damn wait. Because this manga chapter was freaking great. Anyways, I'm gonna talk about the manga chapter. Go through all everything that's discussed, and then at the end, I'll discuss my thoughts and theories on things going on in the future. So, anyways, this is My Hero Academia chapter manga 292, titled Threads of Hope. Anyways, you see in the in the um jet. The best genius was clearly also listening to Dobby's um Dobby's um broadcast about you know the truth being revealed. He says this, Dobby, you fiend, you've been waiting for this moment when they couldn't prevent mass destruction and faith in heroes um, was wavering. You will get, you will not get your way today. He drops down and then in a beautiful like full page thing, he tie, he wraps all his threads around Gigantomachia and the other League of Villain members. And he's got them all pinned down. I'm like, okay, we got him. We got him. Bakugo's obviously happy to see that Best Genius is there. And trust me, you know, that was crazy. Now Dobby says, you, you're supposed to be dead. The corpse was real. And essentially, Best Genius is like, yeah, that's what you thought. But guess what? You were wrong here and stuff like that. But Dobby's like, well, then he, Dobby's at the point, he's like, fuck it. Who cares if you're alive? I don't care, I'm killing people and stuff like that. Or he says like, it doesn't change, you know, the fact that my history has been now revealed to the world and stuff like that. So that's interesting. Anyways, that's Genius is holding Gigantomachia down and Gigantomachia, he's like, he, he he's like, he's not even moving. And Spinner makes a mention, he's like, even Machia doesn't have unlimited stamina to keep up with this and stuff like that. Spinner goes on to say, like ever since you know the mansion stuff he's been running to shigarachi so it would make sense that he would be out of stanima and he can't have the willpower the you know the power to get out of this you know thread this really strong thread and stuff like that and that's when he gets the idea and he tells freaking shigarachi you know no oh, he's spinner's like shigarachi you need to get freaking you know give an order to gigantomachia to do something otherwise we're screwed and stuff like that but then, you know, he's trying to, as he's trying to communicate to Shigarachi, Nezure gets in the way and she's like, -uh, I'm putting a stop to you. But too late, too, too bad, too late because Nezure, one of the best girl Nezure, she gets cooked to a uh, crisp because uh, Dobby actually hits her with his flames and damages her. Now, one, this literally pisses off Shota, um, Todoroki to the point we start seeing brother versus brother in this chapter and stuff like that. Dobby freaking, you know, is just making fun of what he did to Nezure and he's like, ha 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 ha, check it out. Endeavor's history is repeating itself. Another kid with a bright future all burned up. And I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, you know, <laughs> I, I was glad that Nezure did show up in this battle, but it's like, I'm still waiting for Nezure to get her big moment, even though she did get, you know, a big moment a few chapters ago with a team up move with Todoroki. But 
Come on, could we give some Ninja Ray Hado respect, please and thank you? I didn't like the fact that she got taken out like that, but hey, it, it sucks. Anyway, she's probably down for the count because she got burnt, like Dobby said, to a crisp. Um, so that is, and bro, Dobby, he, since his flames are obviously super hot, he, he burns essentially Best Genius Cable. And bro, can I just tell you this? Some of these drawn shots that Horikoshi does of freaking Dobby, man, he's making Dobby look like a damn near devil. Like, God, some of the RM scene off Dobby is freaking demonic looking, and it's freaking creepy looking. Ever since he was, you know, revealed to be Toya Todoroki, Horikoshi's art and his description of freaking Toya Todoroki or Dobby, essentially, is the fact that he merely made, he's making his, you know, the way he looks, look like insane now. Like he's lost all sense of reason. It's like, oh, now that I release and said everything I wanted to say, my sanity's completely gone, which fun fact, he does kind of tell to Todoroki later in, during their fight and stuff like that. Now, um, like I said, after seeing this, um, Todoroki, he goes in charging at da at um, Toya Todoroki or Dobby, um, I, I still don't know what I'm gonna call him. I, I'm see, it's hard not to to call him Toya because you, you I'm just predominantly calling him Dobby. I need to work better. He ch Todoroki charges at his brother Toya and stuff like that. In the meantime, Deku's watching all this happen. He's like, "Come on, stand up! I gotta get up! I don't care if my limbs are broken. I don't care. I black up. You know, I well, I need to get up there and help somebody." stuff like that so yeah um he anyways that's when you know it cuts over to shigarachi and shigarachi just with the tips of his breath he's like makia, destroy you know and that's when makia hears the order he's like yes master and then he starts to get up gets the power and is trying to break the cables some of them are starting to snap, but you know, the cables are still locked in tight. Now, Best Genius is doing the best he can to hold on and make sure the threads are essentially stuck free and things like that. Anyways, we cut over to the battle with Burnin and the other heroes who are fighting the other high end gnome moves and stuff like that. Now, one of the heroes is like, look, we've taken down a half of these dang high end gnome moves, but they still taking out some of us, you know, and we're low on numbers too. Um, which that's when some of the Hayanomus, they hear the, essentially the plea of Shigarashi saying, come destroy. They eventually start running away because they're, they're fleeing to Shigarashi to go to his aid and stuff like that. And that's when Vernon sees this is like, they're chasing, they're trying to go after Shigarashi and stuff, aren't they? Then you see this one, one looking Hayanomu, listen, these Hayanomus, man, um, Horikoshi is giving them unique designs. I will give them credit. He is giving them unique designs. Now, my thing is, these high end gnomes, man, they look like things out of Resident Evil. The thing that was about to attack Burnin looks like something out of Resident freaking Evil. I am. Okay, My Hero Academia. Are we gonna have a collaboration with Resident Evil? Okay. Well, that's what these high-end gnomes about. Anyways, when it looks like freaking Vernon is going to get attacked by one of the, by the worm gnomu, somebody hits um, the thing. Now, um, I don't know if that is, or was Lemillion or completely another hero. I guess we're just gonna have to find out as the weeks progress. It might have been a different hero, um, not Lemillion. Who knows? We'll just have to find out. But that's where that little thing ends up. We cut back to the fight where um, Best Genius, like I said, is doing his best to hold on to Gigantamaki and stuff like that. And then now we get into brother versus bro brother. Todoroki, Shoto Todoroki versus Toya Todoroki. And they are clashing with each other. Todoroki essentially tells Toya, like, you really sent those villains our way. One of them almost killed Natsu, which, um, as you remember, way back in the end of her training arc with the whole thing with the where Dobby sent the head out to the one villain to kill, essentially, you know, get in the arc, get in the way of Endeavor and stuff like that. 
Um, Shoto is like, listen, you remember him? You remember him? The brother you cry to every day? And Dobby's like, <laughs> oh, brother. He's like, really? He almost died? Well, that's a damn shame. Well, too bad because, hey, I could care less anymore. Um, and he actually goes on and said, well, I guess that would have hurt Endeavor. And then like, Wow, this dude really lost all sanity. Like, he's lost all sanity beyond belief. And even Todoroki replies by saying like, are you insane? And Toy is like, yeah, I am. Um, you know, you know, listen, your big brother, he don't have feelings no more for people. And that's what I said. And the way, you know, Horikoshi's throwing it, drawing his art, it's like, Toya doesn't care anymore. Now he's got this huge, you know, revelation off his plate. I think now he's just a pure insane villain, which now he wants to do whatever he wants and ruin Endeavor's reputation and make sure he wants to die and makes him regret everything he's done for him. And I think, I think Toya has literally, you know, went insane. Like I said, the art you see in the manga chapters tell it all. Like he looks bat shit crazy essentially anyways um and then you know th that little skirmish right now um closes off uh, for the bit we don't know what's gonna happen next but they're obviously clashing and that's when you know toy is like now i get a chance to kill you yes this is just gonna be a great day anyways it cuts back to um what's going on um mr compress sees the other high gnomes on the way and he's like oh luck is on our side and stuff like that Deku sees this and he's like, that's genius. And then that's when Deku's like, I don't care if my limbs are broken, yada, yada, yada. I need to cover best genius and stuff like that and help him out. He goes on to say um, that nobody's been saved yet. Don't be the old worthless Deku who can't save anyone. I got to cover best genius back. And next thing you see, the last two pages is you see Mario's face come out of the ground as he says, power. And that's when Deku ends up the chapter of the scene. Lemillion, and Lemillion is back, man. Mirio has his powers back. I don't know how he got his powers back, but one. Um, let's get into the theories. There's only two potential reasons or two potential cases, in my opinion, that I think how Mirio got his power back. One, maybe they found the antidote to get people's powers back. Or actually, there could have been no, I can't say three, but I'll say two for now. Um, maybe they found a potential antidote, which could get, which, you know, can counteract the quirk take away bullets, little defect in it, and give the powers back to Mario by, I guess, you know, taking this medicine or whatever. Or number two, which is probably the most plausible outcome is, Aerie must have rewinded time back to when he had his powers. Um, now, that leads into a whole another boat of things, too, because that means, well, if Ari did that, then that means, does she have a better, you know, gist and a better control of her powers as, you know, she once did? You know, we can find out from Muriel, like, oh, yeah, you know, she was, you know, um, um, Aizawa was kind of helping her use her powers better to make sure she can control it, and maybe, Aerie doesn't have full, full control, but has somewhat of a good control where maybe she can use this one person and try to use it, use Mirror as an example, and maybe it turned out working and she got control of it. Who knows? I guess my third plausible outcome, which is probably the least likely, but if I was somehow wrong, maybe, you know, you have to wait for some time and then maybe the quirk erasing bullet, you know, little thing wears off and you'll get your powers back. So far, my only leading one is the fact that Airy might have been the one that did it. Because if she's able to do it, then okay, good. You can use it after this whole thing. You can use her after this whole thing to heal Deku back to normal so he doesn't have the loss of his arms. Even though some people have said that would be a good plot device for Deku. Um, personally, I still think if Aries masters her power, her, her, her quirk, she's gonna rewind Deku and make him back to where Deku can use his arms again regardless of that aspect. But that's my leading case. My second leading case is the fact that 
they maybe found an antidote and they just stuck it as like a shot to Mirio and now he got his powers back. Um, or his corp or his corpse back. But um, we'll probably get an explanation from Mirio next week, most definitely, of how he got his powers back. And like I said, it's probably Eerie. They did show Eerie at one point sitting with All Might. So maybe, you know, she did do some off, you know, screen training um, or off manga page training um, with Aizawa and she got a better understanding how to use her quirk. Because we do know she was at UA for a, for a pretty much a few months actually, you know, at UA just chilling there. So Aizawa definitely must have just, you know, watched over and said, hey, let's try to see if we can do your powers and stuff like that. So, yeah, and then if it doesn't work, it can always shut your powers off and things like that. So, yeah, um, more things this chapter. Um, so, one, obviously, we don't know. I don't know, too, if it's another new hero with Burnin that saved Burnin. It might have been, you know, Mirio, and he might have just permeated to the ground and, you know, chased after the Hyanomus. But who knows? It could have been, it could be a whole new, it could be somebody we know that hasn't appeared yet in the war. Um, the Shoto versus Toy Todoroki fight. Man, um, we all said, how is Todoroki going to take everything that Toy has been saying to him? I think now the fact that, you know, Toy had told to his face, like, oh, well, if Natsu almost died, that's too bad. Eh, it's a shame. I think that's when Todoroki is gonna have, like, no, I know he's my brother, but I can't hold back against this guy. He literally didn't give a crap that his own brother died, his own family died. Um, somebody that he cried to, um, which is crazy enough as it is. So that shows how crazy um, Dobby is, essentially. Um, Artoya is. Um, so uh, I, we can also add Nezre Hado to the list of heroes that are out of commission. So it was looking like, oh, you have Todoroki, best genus. Um, yeah, Todoroki, best genus. Um, Nezure and Ida, four heroes all healthy. Well, now you can take out um, Nezure Hado, but then again, you can replace her with another, you know, hero that hasn't taken damage yet, who probably will stand the best chance against any members of the League of Villains because he can permeate, because he can use permeation. Um, you substitute him with, um, you substitute um, Nezure with um, Mario. So that is going on. I definitely know that when Nezure sees as well as um, Ta um, Tam Tamaki, um, they're definitely gonna be happy that Mario got his powers back. Um, and yeah, so that is good. Um, there's nothing else I can really talk about for this manga chapter. This manga chapter was really good. I was really freaking, uh, you know, happy that this manga chapter ended the way it ended and I cannot wait for next week. Thank goodness we're not going on another break. Um, the next chapter comes out next Sunday. So other than that, guys, I was, um, if you guys like the video, leave a like, put in the comment section your thoughts on the return of the million, as well as thoughts on Shoto versus Toya and um, anything else revealed in the chapter. Will Gigantomachi break out of the tables? He might break out. I don't know if he will break out. I, I still feel like if he breaks out, they're going. He's going to grab the League of Villains and Shigaraki and just retreat. Um, I think we've come to the point that there might just be a draw in the favor of the villains because they kind of messed up hero society. But so far, things are looking somewhat much more brighter. But like I said, every time we look at something so bright, they always make it depressing. So, yeah. Um, Mirio might be the person to change the tide of this war and make the League of Villains finally retreat. We'll just have to see where this goes on. Um, yeah. Um, hit that subscribe button. You want to get more My Hero Academia manga chapter content. Oh, I almost also forgot. I don't know if I'm make a video about it, but um, apparently My Hero Academia, you know, they confirmed that they're going to get a third movie. Um, I thought they were going to be done with movies um, after Heroes Rising because we clearly saw the effect that Heroes Rising had on season four of, you know, the anime in the first half. Um, so, listen, um, 
my thoughts on the news. Okay, it's fine. I'll take another movie. I think personally the reason why they did another My Hero Academia movie or why they're doing another My Hero Academia movie is how big and how much Heroes Rising sold at the box office, not only for Japan, but in America as well. Um, like, honestly, My Hero Academia is probably the biggest anime out here in Western culture or in, in the States. Like, you know, next to Dragon Ball, um, My Hero Academia is probably like, top tier and trust me when heroes rising came to theaters it was beloved by many many people like i have the blu-ray copy of the movie and that movie i swear is one of the best anime movies i watched hands down and since it made so much money i'm guessing they're like well hey we might as well just do another movie and we can somehow make the, the next movie the third movie better than heroes rising we can make even tons more money now, eventually, it's going to be like, well, how many movies can you make? Because you can't top every movie you just last made. I'll be shocked and I'll be freaking surprised how they're going to top whatever Heroes Rising gave. But it seems like in the third movie, they're going to be, it's going to be, you know, because in the first movie, it was kind of centered around Deku and stuff like that. Mostly around Deku. The second movie was centered around Deku and Bakugo. In the promotional, you know, teaser poster, it looks like this upcoming movie is going to be centered around our new big three, or the new, the future big three of UA, um, Deku, Todoroki, and um, Bakugo. So it seems like that's what the movie is going to be centered around, those three characters, um, which means that the movie could be taking place around the Endeavor training arc time. Um, so yeah, they won't probably be afraid to go a little bit far into the timeline in terms of where things are when the movie takes place, because Heroes Rising took place, if it were in the canon timeline, it would take place between season four and season five, in my opinion. It was held because you see the upgrades that they got him after, you know, after season four and stuff like that. But um, I'm really excited, the fact that we're getting another My Academy movie. Like I said, I don't know how they're gonna talk Heroes Rising. Hero Rising, personally, was one of the best anime movies of all time. Um, so hopefully they'll sh shock me, but um, I don't know how they're gonna handle it in theaters. Um, I'm not too keen on going to theaters at the point at this point at this current point in time until we get vaccines for obviously the virus and things eventually get better. Um, so who knows? Um, they said in Japan the movie will release like I think they said summer of 2021. I don't know when that would mean for English for the American release. Maybe winter of 2021 or early 2022 um trust me we got heroes rising pretty early like heroes rising in japan came out in december and we only got in um america i believe got heroes rising um in japan america got heroes rising in january of 2020 um i think it was february 2020 it was either one of those two months, I forgot. Um, I think it was January 2020, which means we only got it a month, one month after the Japanese release. And I guarantee you, if that's the case, we might actually get a winter release date in 2021 if things are running back to normal in movie theaters and stuff like that because of the virus. But other than that, I'm excited for that news. So yeah, anyways, I just talked long enough. Hey, hit that subscribe button if you wanna get more My Hero Academia content. Hit that notification bell if you wanna get more things that I upload to the channel. Anyways, I'm the Gallagher. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Until then, guys, see you guys on the next video. Peace.